In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist, a place where Bishop Pilla was pastor for so many years and touched so many hearts. We are grateful to be able to be here to spend this time in prayer and to assist his family, Bishop Pilla's family and his friends, those closest to him, with our support, our care, and also to assist Bishop Pilla's soul on his journey with our prayers. We know that he hears us and that the Lord answers what's in our heart, that he might give Bishop Pilla what is his, his good. I received this week a letter from the Holy See, a note from the Holy See, which I would like to read to everyone here this morning. To the Most Reverend Edward C. Molesic, Bishop of Cleveland. His Holiness, Pope Francis, was saddened to learn of the death of Bishop Emeritus Anthony M. Pilla, and he offers heartfelt condolences to you and to the clergy, religious, and lay faithful of the diocese. Recalling with gratitude the late bishop's many years of priestly and Episcopal ministry to the church in Cleveland, his zeal for Catholic education and interreligious dialogue, and his leadership within the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, the Holy Father joins you in commending his soul to the merciful love of Christ, the Good Shepherd. To those present at the Mass of Christian Burial and to all who mourn Bishop Pilla in the sure hope of the resurrection, His Holiness cordially imparts his apostolic blessing as a pledge of peace and consolation in the Lord. Signed Cardinal Pietro Parolin, Secretary of State. And so we know that the Holy Father is close to us this day as we lay Bishop Pilla to his rest. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have great sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to eternal life. Amen. pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Anthony, to whom you committed the care of your family, may with the manifold fruit of his labors enter into the eternal gladness of his Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines. Juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On this day, it will be said, Behold our God for whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated and it is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we, knew, we know partially and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the pa partial passes away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. But when I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord.
loves me will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him. be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Anyone who remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. The Gospel of the Lord. As no doubt uh, most of you are suspecting, and uh, most of you that know me are well aware, I've been, uh, I got myself a little worked up about this uh, occasion and uh, this uh, invitation. And, uh, uh, you know, I have, uh, I have heard a lot of these kind of formal presentations where uh, such a historic moment, but an august uh, crowd has gathered and uh, you know, the customary and appropriate greetings to everyone. And um, so, uh, you know, I said I, I had myself a little worked up. So I was uh, preparing to make sure that I had the greeting appropriately. And um, I heard uh, in my uh, concern this uh, little voice uh, in my ear. And as I had heard many times, uh, when I would get myself worked up uh, around a big deal, uh, like this uh, in the bishop's office, uh, and he would say to me, Ed, take a patience pill. <laughs> so, uh, bear with me. Uh, Your Excellencies, Archbishops, uh, Bishop Molesic, my brother priests, deacons, religious, lay pastoral ministers, baptized members of the faithful, distinguished ecumenical interfaith and civic representatives, Governor and Mrs. Devine, 
all those joining us on live stream. So I had the list. And I was reserving the last place for my first expression of sympathy. And I wrote, the Pilla family. And once again, I heard that little uh, kind voice say to me, come rushing in my ear, and he said, they're all the Pisha, they're all the Pilla family. I said, well, maybe, Bishop, you're right. So I decided to check the list again, and I went backwards up the list, right? The Pilla family. And then I, those of you on live stream, those of you from the interfaith community, the civic representatives, those of you that baptized faithful, deacons, priests, lay ministers, religious, your excellencies, the Bishop Pilla family. And I know you're, I want to say something, my dear sisters and brothers in the Bishop Pilla family, you have my sympathy. And I want to say something to all of you members of the Bishop Pilla family, something that you know from having been ministered to by Bishop Pilla, having been loved by him, and that you no doubt have heard from him at least once in your uh, even brief lives. You could probably all join me on this, and we're going to get it out of the way. You are good people. Yeah. In his latter years, he would add, because he usually repeated it, right? Very good people. I may be exaggerating this point, but it is because I believe and I have come to announce that this Bishop Pilla family was the point of Bishop Anthony Michael Pilla's life among us. It was the call of and the real effect of his ministry for us in over 40 years. And it is today, sisters and brothers, the commission for our journey going forth from this place in the wake of the bishops passing from our midst. As members of the Bishop Pilla family, we're charged by him, his life and his ministry, and now his death, to live on in his love. To the Pilla family, uh, to you Mary, the wife of Bishop's only brother Joe, your nieces and nephews, please let me name them. Mary Lee, George, Helen, Tony, Joe, JP, Joe Mary, Teresa, and Jamie, who knew him and loved him and called him simply uncle, together with the, what is it, 35 and counting, the, used to, the bishop used to say, of the offspring and the spouses he loves so much. You meant the world to him, and I want to offer you our sincerest sympathies, and on behalf of the whole church, if I might, to thank you for sharing your life and love so well with the bishop, and for sharing the bishop so generously with us. Another word about how well you cared for him in these last years, really giving him new life. You really brought him back to life in many ways. He so loved being part of your family home. Loved your cooking, Tony, which I think he was finally starting to uh, get over that crazy diet of his. Yeah? I used to call it the no good diet. That was Bishop Hill's diet. If there's something good in front of you, don't ever eat it again, and you'll be perfectly fine. <laughs> and he even loved that dog, Jax. I know you're all going to miss him terribly. On behalf of the Pilla family, if I might, 
I'd like to express our deep gratitude to you, Bishop Mlesic, and your staff, to Father Sean Ralph and the Cathedral for the exceptional hospitality and kindness you've shown us in these difficult days. It means uh, everything to us. On January 6, 1981, at his installation mass as the ninth Bishop of Cleveland, Bishop Pilla introduced himself to this packed cathedral on that snowy day in January to his new church community, and he simply said, I am your brother, Anthony. On that day, he really did make history by being the first priest of our diocese to be called and nominated as his bishop. But what we found out since in the last 40 years is that our brother Anthony wasn't talking about a brother of ours being newly transformed into our bishop, but that he was inviting us to consider a new model of bishop for us who is our brother. That was a new thing. And it took some getting used to. This approach to being a bishop came to him naturally, the hand and the heart of his dear parents, Italian immigrants of elementary school education, George and Libra Pilla, growing up with his brother Joe and uh, his wife and family. And, uh, how about the cousins and the Italian family relationships? You know, they're all related. Bishop always said his mother, with her meager formal education, was nonetheless the most brilliant person he had ever met. He always said that the two greatest gifts in his life were his priesthood in the church and his mom and dad, great parents, especially his mother Libra, who lived to be 96 years old. We all know he was very devoted to her. Uh, you know, he called his mom every morning and every evening certainly the entire time that I was in the office, but we'd finish our evening engagement and get in the car, and he'd say, Ed, give me your phone. So I'd give him my phone, and then I'd hear him say, Hi, Ma. It's me, Anthony. You know, I started calling my mom every day in imitation of him. So if you have your mom, listen to the bishop. Give her a call. You will not regret it. I remember a story about Mrs. Pilla's uh, contribution to the bishop's sense of self. While visiting with the Archbishop of Cincinnati, the predecessor of Archbishop Schnur here today, Daniel Polarczyk. Now, Mrs. Pilla had known Daniel Polarczyk since he was 16 years old when he was roommate with Bishop Pilla in the college or high school seminary in Cincinnati. Figure that out. Sitting in Mrs. Pilla's living room, she says, very sweet and tenderly, Archbishop, would you like some more coffee? Oh, and the Archbishop said, well, yes, that would be fine. She turned her head slightly and said, Anthony, get the Archbishop some coffee. So the church wasn't the first mother that called Anthony to obedient and loving service. After a couple of months of being installed, or as ordained a bishop, the new Bishop Pilla was lamenting to his dear friend, Ursuline's sister, Laura Buhal, saying, I can't do this bishop thing. It's just not me. And Sister Laura corrected him, Lovingly, of course, as she could do, and privately. Bishop, you can do this. Don't worry about being a bishop. Just be Anthony, and you'll be fine. And fine he was. On August 1st, 1979, as we all know, Father Pilla was ordained a bishop, and he chose the motto, Manete in Deleccione Mea, which we heard in today's gospel translated as remain in my love. Bishop Pilla's chosen translation of it, however, was slightly different. Live on in my love. It came across, at least to me, a little less of a command and more of a commissioning 
more of an invitation. Bishop Pilla accepted the challenges and the charges and the responsibilities of his new office, but he was determined and convicted to, and to modify his tasks and his choices by this command, to live his life in love. On his personal palette, you know, he was a painter. On his personal palette of spiritual gifts, great intellect, discipline, teaching, loyalty, artistry, and others, his preferred and most effective gift to employ as bishop was tender, brotherly love. The greatest of gifts, as we heard. Bishop Hill's ministry as bridegroom of the church is described nearly word for word in that beautiful reading proclaimed by Sister Rita Mary today in Paul's hymn in praise of love, kind. That's right, that's, that was him. Meek, never rude, never pompous, patient, oh my, patient. That's the ticket. It changed him. It changed our church, and it changed the world. His commitment to lead with love first brought him to his knees in prayer. Every morning, I'd look into his office and see him sitting at his desk. Eileen, you'll remember, bravery in front of him, praying before his first appointment of the day. And at night, now in the wingback chair in his office, he'd be nuzzled in his evening prayers. He never, ever missed a daily celebration of the Holy Eucharist. His prayerful devotion, especially to the Eucharist and to our Blessed Mother, changed him and brought him consolation and strength in difficult times. And, oh boy, did he have difficult times. On September 11th, 2001, when everybody in Cleveland was fleeing downtown in fear, and I was among them, just to let you know, the bishop says, I want us to, us to celebrate Mass. That was him and me. So, we came into the cathedral church and celebrated the Mass. And pray away he did. I know I was only praying one thing, and we would get out of here alive. I knew he was convinced that his connection to the love of God in prayer was his pathway to his service to the church in love. Like so many of you, I knew the bishop prayed for me, and it made a difference to me. It strengthened me. Live on in my love was not only his motto, his path to personal holiness, but it became the hallmark of his Episcopal work, what I call leading by loving. Humble, tender love. By it, he gave flesh to St. Paul's confidence. Love conquers all. And we saw its effect on our church, didn't we? Especially in the broken spots of our lives. Think about the broken spot in your life that uh, Bishop Pilla employed his first and preferred and most effective uh, weapon, if you will, tender, brotherly love. He had a special expertise in that. In December 1980, in his first official act since being announced as diocesan bishop, he chose to go to the airport with the Ursula nuns of Cleveland to welcome the bodies of their martyred sister Dorothy Kazel and laywoman Jean Donovan. He sat down there on that tarmac with those sisters. The pattern of his coming extension of humble, tender love of Christ, just where it's needed. That sadness, so this is the pattern, sadness met by courageous love. He never shied away. It made all the difference. And neither of them nor none of us were ever the same after that moment. Who can forget the effect of the bishop's love and friendship on Sam Miller? 
Under the influence of tender, welcoming love, he became a remarkable and persuasive advocate for Catholic schools in the city, Bishop's Pet Project, to the point that the man became the chairperson of the Alleluia Ball. He has to, I know he was, the first Jew in the history of the Diocese of Cleveland to be such a, cha a chairperson, and ever since, I'm sure. Bishop Hill is leading by loving, prompted Methodist pastor Ken Chalker last Friday to declare Bishop Pilla as a bishop for us all. So we see the Bishop's Pilla family does not have ecclesiastical limits. Something funny happened on that one afternoon uh, we, between events. We were grabbing a bite to eat at Stan Cato's restaurant in Parma. It's the nod to Father Damien. We were seated next to a large group who were celebrating a 50th wedding anniversary. During our meal, a member of that family came over and they tapped me on the shoulder and asked to speak with me. So while excusing the interruption, the man said, I have a strange request. Would the bishop pose for a picture with my parents? Well, that didn't seem strange to me at all. It happened all the time. I went back to the table and the bishop graciously agreed. After the short blessing in the picture, the bishop sat down and I engaged the anniversary couple in conversation, asking, oh, what parents are you from? And I could see the concerned expression on the wife's face. And she said, oh, Father, I hope we didn't do something wrong. We're not Catholic. We belong to Parma Lutheran Church. <laughs> so I suppressed an open ma mouth laugh and I assured her that Bishop Hilla was good friends with Bishop Miller, the Lutheran bishop, and that there was nothing at all to be concerned about. The tender welcoming mercy that that Lutheran couple at Stancados and countless others could easily discern from a distance, no doubt, prompted diocesan social action minister Tom Alio to say, Bishop Pilla was Pope Francis before there was a Pope Francis. I couldn't agree more. In the psalm for today's Mass, we sang of God's love and mercy. Bishop Pilla led by loving and forgiving, and it changed hearts. It changed our notion of a bishop. It changed the church for us who witnessed it, and we with him changed the world around us. The most notable effect of the bishop's tender mercy within the church was probably among the various ethnic communities in the city and throughout the diocese. I can remember uh, one of those late night telephone calls in the car. He was talking to his mother. He said, Ma, I just was with the Spanish people and they wanted me to tell you that they love you. And then he went on and they told me that I belong to them. A member of that his Hispanic community, Millie Carabello, said that Bishop Pilla loved all of us in such a way that we suspected that the blood running through his veins wasn't only Italian, but he had multicolored blood belonging to every group in the city through his veins. He is one of us. I think that was the mysterious effect that so many people of our community felt when the bishop was in their presence. I know I did. Every day. I could feel it affirmed for who I was, as I was, loved, forgiven. Boy, I needed his forgiveness and welcomed. No barrier, no distance, no judgment, never a condescension, tender love, a true shepherd of hearts, and a true shepherding by heart. As the years went by, we witnessed our brother Anthony's commitment to live on in my love, grow into a veritable pastoral plan, with structures and strategies within the church. He said this 
togetherness, or all of our favorite word, collaboration, must be the foundation of our mission and the basis of our hope. He would say the primary goal of ministry cannot be to win the argument or to get your own way. It has to be rather to win the friendship of those we must accompany down the road ahead. That's a change and a challenge for most of us. He loved the process that slowed things down, even to our frustration at times. The process slowed things down so that everyone affected by a decision would have the chance to catch up and, hopefully, jump on board. That's the way he did it. In addition to consultation and collaboration, the bishop showed us that friendship is the means to the kingdom of God. In 1998, he said, there is not very much good that can come about without sincere friendship. But if we are friends, a great deal is possible. And so it was. Vision and goals in the 1980s set our diocesan administration and our parishes as one community together on a common course of renewal in all its aspects. Church in the City in the 1990s, with its parish partnerships, was the highest profile effort of the bishop's term in office. If we are friends, a great deal is possible. In 1991, cooperation and collaboration led to the innovative ministry formation concept at a place called the Center for pastoral leadership. That was big. How could the formation of ministers not happen in the collaborative setting in which those ministers are going to serve? Leading by loving. Vibrant Parish Life in the New Millennium is a concrete model for ministry based upon fraternal love and parish cooperation. Although conceived in 2001, its aims and strategies are as contemporary and as necessary today as ever. So, at the USCCB as president, he took his fraternal love and consultation plan to the National Catholic Church. He ended up presiding over the writing of two pastoral letters, and to no one's surprise in Cleveland, they were entitled The Challenge of Peace and Economic Justice for All. There it is. Sounds like Bishop Pilla, Anthony. I don't have to tell you how much grief his dedication to communion and collaboration caused him there. Ms. Von Alt, who served the church for over 50 years and in the bishop's office, uh, with Bishop Pilla for 31, is with us today. She described the privilege of walking alongside Dear Bishop, that's what she always called him, by the way, Dear Bishop. She said it was like sharing in a Camelot experience. That now with his death seems to be part of a different time. Ken Chalker, again, in reflecting with me on the phone uh, back over the many years of faith and work that he and the bishop did together in the city, he called it a unique time of grace for the city of Cleveland. Apparently, by the sound of his voice and the tone of our conversation, relegating that to a place in our shared memories. And since the bishop's death, if I've heard it once a thousand times, Father, it's the end of an era. And maybe so. Maybe so. I must admit myself, on Saturday morning, while getting the bishop 
vested at the funeral home for this final celebration of the Mass with us. I was kind of overwhelmed with the responsibility ahead of me to get all of his Episcopal stuff, if I can say that, turned over to the diocesan archives for posterity's sake. So maybe you can imagine that rather uh, despairing thought. And then I thought, you know, we as a church family might be tempted to take the inspiration of our brother Anthony, the power of his example and love, the gains in our friendship and growth, and the love that he shared with all of us so well, all of that of Bishop Anthony and shove it into those same archives as so much historical Episcopal stuff. As I was beginning to get wrapped up in that, as I said, discouraging thought, as I can do, it just seemed to me like a great story ended. And then I was reminded of dear Bishop's words at his retirement. When we have walked this path of love faithfully, our boast will be nothing more than that we have done our part. We have borne the light of hope for another leg of the journey. And now here it comes. The most important judgment of us will be the measure to which our descendants follow where we have trod. Sisters and brothers, I think the bishop was talking to, well, me. I think he was talking to us. Can we hear him? Will we listen? Can we be the living signs of his faithful service by walking forth from this place today as the Bishop Pilla family and live on in his love. Let us, in faith, call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ, his Son, from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. That God may establish the Christian people in faith and unity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may rescue the entire world from all the evils of war, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That he may be pleased to show himself a father to our brothers and sisters who lack work, food, or housing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That he may be pleased to admit forever to the company of saints his deceased servant Anthony, who once through baptism received the seed of eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God may grant Anthony a share in the heavenly liturgy, for he exercised the priestly office in the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may grant to the souls of our brothers and sisters, friends and benefactors, the rewards of their labors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that he may welcome into the light of his face all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may be pleased to gather into his glorious kingdom all who have gathered here in faith and devotion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the prayers we hold in the silence of an, in our hearts, and now take some time to offer to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the prayers of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants, O Lord. Free them, we pray, from all their sins and make them sharers in your redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice which your departed servant and Bishop Anthony, while in the body offered to your majesty for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring him to your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance worth your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Evangelist and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Anthony, whom you have called from this world to yourself, and grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
nothing to eat. Give them the bread that is
Let us pray. May your merciful kindness, which we have implored, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Anthony, by these, that by these safe sacrificial gifts, he may know the eternal company of Christ in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. I enjoyed the friendship, counsel, and support I received from Bishop Pilla ever since I arrived in the Diocese of Cleveland one year ago. I wish I would have had more time with him, but I was blessed to know him. I think we all were. It was a privilege today to use his pastoral staff and celebrate this Mass with his chalice. He was a joy to be with, had a quick smile, an optimistic outlook, and a marvelous way of connecting people for the good of the church and the good of the community. I once asked him for advice on how to lead this diocese, and he said, just be kind to the people. It was kind of his motto, I think, too. Just be kind. Good advice for all of us. Be kind, be loving. We need a lot more of that these days. The last time I saw Bishop Pilla was at the feast in Little Italy. He attended the Mass I celebrated before the procession through the streets, and then he celebrated the next Mass as I was processing through the streets. Then we met for lunch in the basement of Holy Rosary Church. We enjoyed a good meal together, and then I said to him that I wanted to go up and walk around, not thinking to invite him to go with me. I thought it might be too much for him to walk those several blocks. So up I went with a few other priests and navigated the crowd up the hill in Little Italy and then started back down to the church when all of a sudden I saw a priest coming up the hill. No, not a priest, a bishop. And I said to those around me, is that Tony Pilla? And it was. He was out with the people, walking cautiously up the hill with his cane. And they were crowding around him, asking for his blessing, talking with him, reminiscing. He knew that if he went up to those streets to walk up that hill, he wouldn't get so far. So he knew he could do it. <laughs> he was in his element with his people, and he was enjoying every minute of it. He was the beloved bishop of the Diocese of Cleveland. I saw that and knew that that day. That will be an image that will remain with me for a long time. A man with his people. Or as Pope Francis might say, a pastor going out to get the smell of his flock. In this case, the smell on Bishop Pilla was of meatballs, sausage, and garlic. <laughs> Last week, Father Lakovich, the rector of Borromeo and St. Mary's Seminaries, sent me a video of Bishop Pilla. Pilla. It was on a, I think, an iPhone recording, but Bishop Pilla was speaking with the seminarians at an informal outdoor gathering. It took place about only two or three weeks ago. It, it would be one of his last times visiting there, and he spoke from the heart to the men in formation for the priesthood. He said that many people in America do not want to make a commitment for a long time. And then I'll quote him here, quote, but I will tell you, I've been a priest now for 62 years, and I wouldn't want to do anything else. It's a great life. You know, how many vocations can you get into where every morning you get up and you know that you can make a difference? 
Each one of you can make a difference. End quote. Perhaps those were words for all of us to hear, not just seminarians. You can make a difference. Well, in any case, Bishop Pilla certainly made a difference for us and for many. And that's why we're here. We feel a bit changed, a bit better, because we knew him. Father Dan Schlegel and I were in the car when I learned of his death. Because we were not too far from his home, we drove over and I was able to pray over Bishop Pilla's body. He looked peaceful, as if he were comfortably resting. And I noticed that he was wearing a t-shirt. Not that unusual, but on his t-shirt was an image of Mary holding her son Jesus. He died with that t-shirt of Mary holding Jesus. How appropriate that he died with an image of Jesus and Mary next to his heart. He died close to the faith, close to God, and with the protection of Jesus and the prayers of Mary. Then we ask her to pray for us at the hour of our death. And I know she did for Bishop Pilla. It's because of that faith, faith in a saving God, that we can have a bit of peace ourselves today. For death does not have the last say for a person of faith. And we hope to meet again. That's why we can mourn and celebrate at the same time. That can be said only by people who believe what Bishop Pilla proclaimed every day of his life, that God gives life, life in abundance. May we share that life with others, just as Bishop Pilla did. I want to thank Archbishop Dennis Schnur, our Metropolitan Archbishop, and Archbishop Nelson Perez, my immediate predecessor, now Archbishop of Philadelphia, for your presence with us today. You know, Bishop Perez keeps on telling me how much he loved Cleveland, and I'm coming to know why. But you can't have it back, Archbishop. <laughs> Come as often as you want. <laughs> also, thanks to the other bishops present, a brother bishop to Bishop Pilla, who I keep calling a giant in the American church. It means a lot to have my brother bishops, his brother bishops with us. Thanks for taking the time to offer this prayer for Bishop Pilla and to our priests and deacons who are here, many of them ordained by Bishop Pilla. Guys, just, just let me know. Stand up if you were ordained by Bishop Pilla. He loved all of you, and I'm coming to know that you're good priests. You're good priests. Thanks to the men and women religious for your presence too. I know he felt a closeness with you and saw you as his collaborators in the church's mission, one and all, including our lay ecclesial ministers. Thank you, Father Estock. I knew you were the person to give that homily because you knew him so well and worked with him so closely during your time with him in the office. Your homily was a testimony of our love for Bishop Pilla and your love for him too, a model for us all, especially those of us who are bishops. I also want to recognize Governor DeWine and other civil dignitaries and officials for your presence with us. I know you also considered Bishop Pilla to be a friend because he was. And thanks to our ecumenical and interfaith leaders for your support and prayers as well during this time of our loss. He always enjoyed working with you as his brothers and his sisters. And finally, let me echo Father Estock's condolences. First, from all of us to Bishop Pilla's sister-in-law, his nieces, nephews, and other family members, his longtime secretary, we're sorry for your loss. 
you took such good care of our beloved bishop. Thanks for all you did to make his life happy, full, and comfortable until the end. Although I have to tell you, I know that you kind of quarantined him during the pandemic, but he snuck out once or twice. I know that the loss of your Uncle Tony will leave a hole in your life, but know that he is with you as he continues to do what priests do. He continues to pray for you and love you now from a better vantage point. He's still with you. We're gathered today to support you, pray with you, cry with you, and yes, as we tell the stories of Bishop Pilla's life, let's hope we can smile with you too. I think that would be okay with Bishop Pilla. The same condolences and sentiments go to Bishop's friends, neighbors, and collaborators. And so I used his uh, crozier, his shepherd staff, and his, his chalice, a beautiful chalice. But he had a request for his funeral, and that was keep it simple. So Bishop Pella, my apologies. <laughs> it just wasn't that possible. <laughs> We tried, we tried, but you've made such an impact in our life. And now, good bishop, may you rest in peace, and may you hear our Savior say to you, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Your work is accomplished. Amen. And finally, a word of gratitude to all who put this liturgy together. How beautiful it was. Thank you for all of uh, your work in assisting us in our prayer in any way. Before the, final, before the final commendation, I want to take this opportunity to extend my sympathy to the Pilla family, the immediate relatives, the members of this diocese, the members of this community. The three years that Bishop Pilla served as the, uh, the president of the National Conference of Catholic Bishops, the United States Catholic Conference, I served as general secretary, and therefore I got to know Bishop Pilla quite well. And what was spoken of in the, the homily is certainly true. Bishop Pilla loved this family. Because when I would give him a call and tell him, Bishop, we need you in Washington because members of the administration want to meet with you, he would say, Dennis, is this meeting really necessary? <laughs> or when I'd call him and say, uh, Bishop, the, the, the Holy See wants us to come to Rome for a few, some meetings, and he would say, Dennis, is this meeting really necessary? <laughs> he loved this community. He did an excellent job as the president of the, of the Bishop's Conference, and so our loss 
Your loss is my loss. It's a loss to this country. He provided great leadership, not only as far as administration is concerned, but certainly also as far as spiritual leadership is concerned. So to all of you, my sympathy. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother, Bishop Anthony. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall, rejoi we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our brother, Bishop Anthony, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Bishop Anthony in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of your fellowship with the, saint, with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ 
and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In paradisum, In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest.
Our brother Anthony has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us also pray to the Lord for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother. Together, may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Almighty and ever-living God, in you we place our trust and hope. In you, the dead, whose bodies were temples of the Spirit, find everlasting peace. As we take leave of our brother, give our hearts peace in the firm hope that one day Anthony, our bishop, will live in the mansion you have prepared for him in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Because God has chosen to call our brother Anthony from this life to himself, we commit his body to its resting place. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace, and raise up his body on the last day. For our brother Anthony, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in death, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. To each of the invocations, please respond, Lord, have mercy. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Bishop Anthony and dry the tears of those who weep, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. You promise paradise to the repentant thief. Bring Bishop Anthony to the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all of your saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Bishop Anthony served your church as priest and bishop and was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Bishop Anthony. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, through the death of your Son on the cross, you destroyed our death. Through his rest in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you. And through his rising again, you restored us to eternal life. God of the living and the dead, accept our prayers for those who have died in Christ and are buried with him in the hope of rising again. Since they were true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joy of heaven. We ask this through Christ 
our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us now go in the peace of Christ. Yeah.